Listen, we have two legs and what probably is the best biological cooling system for a reason. And that reason is we were not only meant to move, we were built for it. Evolutionary crafted to venture long distances for extended periods on end, which makes this modern day sit on our asses revolution quite the longevity conundrum. Especially since it seems like our rate and intensity of moving may have an ever interesting association with age acceleration. Yeah, an association that this new study we're gonna review today sought to investigate. Let's see what the science has to say. Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and longevity and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic way. Today, we are once again venturing into the science of badonka donking, specifically how this essential for evolutionary survival activity may affect the rate that we age, posing the notion that if we modulate our activity levels in the right manner, we may just be able to modulate our cellular and metabolic age in a advantageous way, which I think you'd probably agree is pretty darn cool for longevity school because it would not only enable us to live and feel up to our true potential here and now, but also do it for the long run. However, this notion also brings with it some concern simply because we modern intelligent walking apes have never been more sedentary. And I think the best way to explain why is with a little history of our movement evolution. It is estimated that our hunter-gatherer ancestors took upwards of 17,000 steps a day, equating to about eight miles, well over double what the average human does today. And the reasoning back then was really quite simple. If you couldn't move and do it for the majority of the waking day, you couldn't live. You don't get more straightforward math than that. And over the thousands of years of human evolution, this built us into an organism which has been adapted to be at its biological best when we partake in moderate amounts of high intensity work and high amounts of low intensity work on a consistent basis. And at this point in history, we're not just guessing this, we've got the scientific receipts. With study after study, displaying with clarity that more movement is associated with improved cardiovascular health, glycemic control, joint health, immune function, digestion, mood, cognition, and body weight control. And despite first thought, these are not just long-term benefits achieved by deploying the art of delayed gratification. Many of them, even though you can't quantify them easily, are real-time shit, as we've all experienced a pleasant high following a sometimes dreaded but always rewarding bout of exercise. And that right there is due to the immense biochemical shift that stressing your cells in a good way induces. We're talking feel-good endorphins, brain-boosting neurotrophic factors, pain-relieving endocannabinoids, stress-reducing nitric oxide, and immune-relaxing anti-inflammatory compounds all collaborating to bring about this state of pure biochemical bliss, all while making your cellular self more efficient and resilient setting it and you up for prosperity over the long run. That is, of course, as long as you keep doing it. There's always a catch. So, as is tradition, and as with all evolutionary precise mechanisms, what do you think we modern humans do with this innate biologically boosting gift? We take an average of four to 8,000 steps a day, substantially, lower than we once did. And it's this movement downtrend in combination with all the other suboptimal habits that modern day society has standardized on, and unfortunately there's quite a bit of those, which has placed the average intelligent walking ape on the trajectory 
for morbidity or the state of being diseased. A state of being somewhat disabled and impaired from doing what they truly love. What fills them up? What brings them joy for a way too large proportion of their lives? Which is officially not cool for longevity school. Mm -mm. And I know that you, the astute scientific listener, don't just take my word for it, which I love. So to get a better look, let's explore this new hot off the scientific streets data to see if it agrees with some of these crazy claims. And to do this, we turn to a large scale observational study out of China. Here, researchers examine the associations of physical activity and sedentary behavior with longevity and age acceleration across a cohort of nearly 21,000 participants from the Guangzhou Biobank cohort study. To do this, they used an observational and Mendelian randomization analysis to assess the potential impacts and associations, diving specifically into two distinct tiers of physical activity, moderate physical activity and vigorous physical activity, looking into the differences when it comes to longevity outcomes and age acceleration when compared to their sedentary counterparts. Now, it's important to note here that a lot of this data was reliant upon the not so reliable self questionnaires, which is one of the reasons that researchers added the Mendelian randomization. This helps control and normalize the impacts of all the different variables within these observational and epidemiological studies, making them more reliable, not perfect, but more reliable. So with that, What'd they find? Well, a few interesting and surprising things. Starting with the obvious, but important. They observed that there was, in fact, a significant positive association between physical activity and longevity, as well as a negative association between physical activity and age acceleration. And all I gotta say is, whoo, thank God. Imagine if it was the opposite. Couch potatoes would be vindicated everywhere. But luckily, not today. And to really drive this point home, they also observe that sedentary behavior was associated with a higher age acceleration in both the observational and Mendelian randomization models. Now, things get more interesting and more surprising when we start to break down the impact of different intensities. First, when it comes to moderate physical activity, it was observed that this activity level was in fact associated with a higher outcome of longevity and lower age acceleration. Good to know. However, when it came to vigorous physical activity, there was quite a surprise. Specifically, it displayed a non optimal effect, suggesting that overdoing it or stressing the body above and beyond its trained thresholds could actually be detrimental for longevity and age acceleration. Super interesting. So this right here further reinforces that building up exercise levels in a slow and sustainable manner is likely the optimal approach. And you may be wondering, what? exactly is a good goal to strive for here. Assuming the Olympics and Ironman and playing professional sports isn't on your to-do list. Well, the reality is you'll likely get different answers to this question based on a number of different variables and your own personal goals. That being said, I can tell you what this research group landed on. And it seems pretty reasonable, especially if you're training for life. Upon deeper analysis, they found that the threshold for the beneficial impacts of physical activity level on longevity were when physical activity levels exceeded approximately 4,000 met minutes per week. And if you're wondering, what the hell is that? It's approximately an hour and a half of walking per day plus one hour of moderate physical activity. Things along the lines of yoga, tennis, pickleball, and even interpretive dancing. Boiling down to about three hours of good movement a day, which I think it's safe to say most people 
aren't doing. So if you happen to be in this camp or know someone who is, here are some ways to sneak a little more badonka donking into your day. And I just gotta start by saying, isn't it beautiful that the majority of our modern day problems can likely be fixed or drastically improved just by channeling or rechanneling our primal self? I mean, come on, irony at its finest. That being said, it doesn't make this task automatically easy. And as it stands today, most of us stand within two standard deviations of the average intelligent walking ape when it comes to our daily movement, taking less than 8,000 steps per day, which means most of us are in the camp of being able to move more with very little downside and a whole lot of upside. So when it comes to improving this metric, the best place to start is with your baseline, something that has never been easier to track in this device abundant world. In fact, many people have activity tracking devices and don't even know it. And if you're watching this and have a Fitbit smartwatch sleep ring, you have activity tracking. So take a look at it. Observe how many steps you're taking and how long you're sitting each waking day, ideally aiming for 10,000 steps and less than eight hours of sedentary time. Two goals that I'll be the first to tell you are easier said than done. So here are some ways to sneak some extra movement into your day, starting with everybody's favorite time, the morning. Not only does movement jumpstart your biology, align your body clock, ramp up your detoxification system, and boost your mood, all of which we discuss here, it puts you in a better biological position to have a damn day. So habit stacking a five minute walk outside, around the yard, down the block, with the dog, cat, or neighbor's chickens is a great way to start your day. And when I say habit stacking, I'm referring to a technique which entails stacking a new desired habit like walking before or alongside something that you already do. This could be drinking coffee, taking the dog out, or even jamming the tea swift while making your breakfast. Building on top of an established daily habit, thus making it easier to remember and carry out. Speaking of food, another great strategy is to add a 10 to 15 minute walk following each meal. This is not only good because of all of the aforementioned benefits, but it is also a great way to improve digestion, battle bloating, stabilize glucose levels, and stave off that post-meal energy crash. So just like that, we have another 30 to 60 minutes of walking or added movement to your day, or roughly around 3,000 steps. Not too shabby, but let's keep going. One of my favorite hacks I've implemented over the last 10 years is my steps rule. And it's super complicated, so get your notepad. You ready? If you see steps, take them. Maybe it's not that complicated. Now, this one may take a little bit of time to solidify because it does go heavily against our modern comfortability intuitions. But once you hard code it in through repetition, you'll never catch yourself taking the escalator or elevator again. And this also happens to be awesome for building strength because walking steps are hard and hard physical things build strength, which if you didn't know, also, tied to longevity. Another favorite hack of mine is taking at least one meeting a day on the move. And this doesn't just have to apply to work. The reality is we are all on our phones way too much. So might as well take one of your phone activities for a walk. Whether it be a conference call, YouTube, talk of tick, gram of Insta, podcast, whatever. Taking it for a stroll will often enhance the content because it very likely will prime your brain to better understand and retain it. Because exercise happens to be one of the most potent stimulators of neurotrophic factors or little chemicals that prime your neurons to connect and thus you to learn. So hopefully you're consuming something worth learning and retaining. Probably want to do that. Oh, and bringing your movement outside only adds to the 
biological benefits. As nature has proven to be one of the most powerful mood and cognitive boosters there is. Now, as you can tell, all of these are ways to add movement to your day without succumbing to the traditional means of exercise. Things like jogging and going to the gym. But there are actually ways to make those traditional means more fun. That's right, less grueling and less boring. Okay, at least less boring. For example, I personally love to do all of my workouts on a clock typically cycling through five to seven different functional movements every minute on the minute for four to six rounds. Switching up the exercises I do and the equipment I use each and every week. This is a strategy I talk all about in my training for longevity video here. So if you're interested, take a look. I find it as a great way to keep things interesting and keep them as fun as they can be, lifting heavy balls of iron over your head. But again, that's me, and you're you. Your job is to trial and find the movement activities that you enjoy, and thus will willingly and consistently partake in. And although this task is bound to seem a little tedious in the beginning, know that simply means you're on the right track. Healthy habits like exercise when done in a sustainable way are something that your body naturally reinforces. Because just as you personally enjoy feeling good, your cellular and metabolic self enjoys operating efficiently. With every daily step added, bringing you closer to feeling how you're capable of feeling. Effing awesome each and every damn day. So stop making your most valuable asset pay and instead, add a little more badonka donking into your day. You like that rhyme right there? I thought of it when I was on a walk before. See how that works? Yeah.